Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has decided to send two planes full of migrants, most of whom are Venezuelan migrants, over to Martha's Vineyard to essentially engage in a PR stunt. Let's not get that twisted, but also send a message about how, well, if these liberal cities across the country, and especially on the coast, love uh, allowing immigrants into the country, maybe we should send them over to where they're living. Now, I, I just want to say, based on what I've read about how the people living in uh, Martha's Vineyard have welcomed these two planes full of migrants, I, I'm really proud of how the community has come together. You know, they do have a housing crisis there as well, but they're trying to get everyone together to figure out solutions to accommodate these migrants. There's some indication that the migrants were also lied to by Ron DeSantis. Remember, no local government can just force migrants to get on a plane and go somewhere else. They have to agree to it. And the reason why they agreed to it is because they were told that they were going to be sent somewhere else, that they were going to get all sorts of assistance, including workers' permits. So I'll get to those lies that they were told in just a moment. But let me give you the details on what Ron DeSantis and other Republican governors have been doing when it comes to migrants. The migrant group, which included children, arrived on two planes around 3 p.m. without any warning, said the state uh, senator, uh, Julian Sear, a Massachusetts Democrat representing Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket. Now, officials and volunteers from the island's six towns really moved heaven and earth to essentially set up the response that we would do in the event of a hurricane, he said, right? So again, the community all came together and, and handled this with the same seriousness as they would with like a natural disaster or an upcoming natural disaster. Now, uh, Terry McCormick, who is the press secretary for Governor Charlie Baker of Massachusetts, said in a statement that his administration was in communication with local island officials who were providing short-term shelter services to the migrants. Now, Martha's Vineyard is one of these places in the country where wealthy people, including former presidents like Barack Obama, like to live in, vacation at. So as you can imagine, the housing is incredibly expensive. They also have a shortage of housing. So uh, they're really relying on some of the charitable work being done by churches in the area to uh, accommodate the migrants. But the point I want to make is they're doing what they can to help people out. They're not complaining about it. If anything, they're irritated with how there was no communication. Like this was a surprise, right? No one was contacted by Ron DeSantis about what he was going to do. So they were caught completely blindsided by this, uh, which made it even more difficult to provide the accommodations and the shelter and the care that these migrants need. Uh, but at the same time, I do think this is bringing up uh, a, a a much needed broader discussion about the role of the federal government, because let's say there is a migrant crisis, and right now there is, right? And you have migrants coming into Texas or any other border community. They are not getting the assistance they need from the federal government in order to accommodate the flow of migrants coming into their communities, into their state. Now, the Republican Party, of course, doesn't want them coming in at all. So they're not bringing this issue up in good faith. And I acknowledge that and I want to be clear about that. But we also have to acknowledge that Congress has for decades dropped the ball when it comes to the immigration issue. These communities absolutely need federal support, not just for border security, but to support migrants coming into the country so the local individuals there don't have uh, an outsized financial burden in providing those accommodations. I think that's a reasonable point to make. Again, I acknowledge that Republicans would actually just much rather not allow anyone in in the first place. I do not agree with them on that, but I do think that there is worthy criticism toward the federal government and how they have dropped the ball in providing and allocating the necessary resources for these communities so they can actually take care of the flow of migrants coming in. Yeah, so let me go over the legitimate critique and the illegitimate critique in my mind. Uh, so waste of taxpayer money. Yeah, uh, DeSantis is wasting $12 million to fly him out of the state. Okay, fair. Although they would have to spend some money to take care of those immigrants too. That's just reality, okay? Um, and then uh, they say, uh, they did lie to them a little bit, uh, and they said there would be expedited proceedings in Massachusetts and that 
uh, motivated a lot of them to get on there. Uh, but on the other hand, once they got there to Martha's Vineyard, uh, reporters did talk to them. And overall, they were treated really well. So, by the way, credit to uh, the left wing there. They're like, oh, Martha's Vineyard, they'll treat them like hell and complain. Well, no, actually, they treated them great. But that does mean the immigrants were relatively happy with the trip. Um, so that's just uh, the reality. Is it a publicity stunt? Of course, it's a publicity stunt. Uh, by the way, Democrats should try it every once in a while. Uh, because in politics, you need publicity to make your point. Otherwise, no one hears it. So, and the point that the border states are making, kind of, depends on what you call uh, Florida, is, hey, we think we're paying a disproportionate amount uh, here. We don't think the federal government's helping enough. So why don't I just send them to the uh, blue states? Uh, and you guys say you want undocumented immigrants, so you shouldn't have any problem with it. Now, the reality is the blue states don't say we want undocumented immigrants. They say we want a fair process for undocumented immigrants. But I think the argument holds either way. I, I don't see any reason why the blue states should be complaining. So, honestly, yeah. Jake, I don't really see the blue states complaining, though, right? Like, I, I've actually seen the blue states, to their credit, what they complain about is how there's absolutely no communication, no notification. So, I mean, I would be irritated as, as someone living in a blue state. And by the way, I mean, California is a border state. So, of course, we have a massive immigrant community, uh, and it's I don't think they're bad people. I think they enrich the country, uh, but it takes resources to accommodate them, right? Uh, and I don't really see these liberal communities complain about that. What I do see them complain about is the lack of communication and how they're blindsided uh, by these surprise planes showing up with migrants that they haven't been prepared to accommodate. And so I understand that criticism. Yeah, I'm 50-50 on that one too, because well, yes, that's true. But on the other hand, it's not like undocumented immigrants uh, announced their arrival in Texas either. They're not like, hey, guys, we're coming in a couple of months. You might want to plan ahead. At the, uh, but I get that there is a certain flow of immigration that is more predictable and that uh, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, et cetera, can plan around it a little bit better, whereas you're just dropping these folks off. But Anna, keep it real. Like the blue states are using that as an excuse to complain that they're that these people are coming in the first place, right? I mean, look, the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, has already started to send him down to, but now this is getting absurd because we can't have, like one of the complaints they said is, is that folks are making a big deal out of in media now is, oh my God, DeSantis might've broken the law here because uh, the bill that was passed uh, authorizing 12 million says you can send him from this state. And this plane actually originally came from San Antonio. It just just had a pit stop in Florida, so the bill doesn't. Guys, you're nitpicking. I mean, you can nitpick all day long. That's never going to stick, and it make. I think it makes you look unreasonable. Uh, and uh, so, but now we got planes going from Texas to Florida to New to Martha's Vineyard, and and then some going from Texas to New York to Florida. Okay, now this is getting absurd. So, I, I think it's fair to acknowledge. Hey, border states, red states. We, and we should have a fair distribution of funds, which I have always believed in, uh, and because it makes sense. And, yeah. and it's true if a, a hurricane hits a blue, blue state or a red state. It's also true if immigration hits uh, a red state that all everybody should chip in. And finally, Anna, sorry, real quick, the blue states generally give way more money than the red states to the federal government. Yeah, I actually looked into that. And Texas, uh, because it's a giant state, also provides quite a bit of tax revenue to the federal government. Um, but look, this is where I think there's a lot of justified criticism toward these Republican governors, because there is some evidence and reporting suggesting that they, they're lying to the mice. You can't force the migrants onto onto a bus or onto a plane. Uh, they have to consent. They have to agree to it. So did everyone agree and consent to it? Not really. Some of them were lied to, if not all of them. So as NPR reports, the governor of Florida paid to fly about 50 migrants from to Martha's Vineyard. Three of those migrants told NPR a woman lured them onto the plane, saying they'd be flown to Boston to get expedited work papers. She offered us help. Help never arrived. So does it surprise me that uh, Republican governors and whoever's working on this uh, project with them, this publicity stunt with them, would lie to the migrants to get them on the plane? No, it doesn't surprise me at all. And this is the area where they not only deserve criticism, but should be investigated. You can't be lying to the migrants and telling them stories.
stories about how they're going to get expedited workers' permits. And one final thing I'll say is, look, if we actually had a federal government that functioned properly and they pass the legislation we so desperately need for immigration reform, which would include the funding necessary for asylum judges. Uh, it would include the funding necessary to provide humane living conditions for people as they're awaiting their asylum hearings and all of that. Th this issue wouldn't be as devastating as it is. It, this is a broken system and people are coming here out of fear of the conditions that they're living in, in their countries. We should deal with this on a federal level. I don't think it's fair for any local community, whether it be a red state, blue state, red community, blue community, who cares? What matters here is ensuring that we're providing the best solutions for the issues that we're dealing with. And by the way, we also have a massive worker shortage right now. So all of those stories that we had been hearing about like, oh, migrants are coming in and they're taking our jobs. We need, we need people to work in America. And the fact that we have restricted the flow of migrants into America has actually been kind of devastating uh, when it comes to this worker shortage. So I think that there could be a plan in place that works for everyone. It's just that we don't have politicians who have any interest in working on that plan. Yeah, guys, so last thing. Um, so I, I hear what Anna's saying, and I, I wanna be clear. The idea that the, the plane didn't stop long enough in Florida um, and hence it's illegal, sounds like it's a big stretch to me. Uh, so um, on the other hand, lying to people to get them to go somewhere um, against their wishes, that is a real problem, okay? And that starts the borderline on, on kidnapping. I can give you a hundred examples of how much you could lie to someone and mislead them and send them to the wrong place. And you begin to see, oh yeah, right, that, that's bad. We can't do that. Uh, so there needs to be some good regulation on that to make sure they're not breaking the law. But but as a general policy matter, if you think it's okay for undocumented immigrants to come into the country to go through a process where we determine whether they should be, whether they're refugees or not, whether they should get to stay or not, which I believe, yes, we should do that, then you should be okay with them coming to any state. So overall, I, I don't mind if they're in my state or in another state. And I think that if you're a good progressive, you shouldn't mind either.